In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for in your wisdom you have formed us. You feed the hungry and clothe the naked. You set free those who are bound. You raise up those whose courage falters. You provide for our every need. You have called us from all peoples. You bless your people with peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for in your wisdom you have formed us. In the 145th chapter of Psalm, David says, I will exalt you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and I will extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My
from heaven to earth to show us all the way from the earth to the cross my debt you paid from the cross to the grave you ascended Jesus from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name on I invite you into a time of confession. Please join with me in prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we so often miss seeing you in the world around us. We confess that we harbor hatred and prejudice and other feelings that hinder our unity as your people. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, O oh God, when we hold too tightly to the daily bread you have given us instead of joining your work of generous living. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. We name you as our pain sharer and sin bearer. We believe in you as our love-centered God, redeemer, reconciler, and the restorer of all the broken pieces of our lives. May we open our eyes to your view of abundance and may we gather the broken pieces of our lives and know ourselves embraced by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear these words of assurance. God hears our prayers. God invites you to know that in the midst of the broken pieces of life, you are deeply loved. Hello young friends, my name is Kim. In a little bit you'll hear a story read from the Bible about a time when Jesus feeds a big group of people. Put your fingers in your ears if you've ever heard the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. That story where Jesus sends his disciples out and they find a little bit of food and they take it around and everybody gets enough to eat and there's like leftovers. Awesome. I bet there's so many earwax covered fingers out there. Take your fingers out of your ears so you can hear. Friends, I have a story to share with you about sharing what we have so that everyone has enough. It's called shelter. It's morning and as the day stirs, the animals do too. Some slowly, some gently, and others go leaping out of bed. Over breakfast, everyone catches up on the latest news. A storm is coming. There's no time for panic. Together, the animals all set to work, gathering wood, squirreling away food, and quieting their fears. They must be prepared. At last, everything is ready, and everyone braces for the storm. The wind begins to pick up. But all is well. The animals are safe and sound in their homes. What if there's someone still outside? Little Fox asks. In the distance, two figures emerge from the fog, the wind howling around them. Everyone watches them from their windows and wonders, who are these strangers? What are they doing here? What do they want? Soon they come knocking. Excuse me. The wind is cold. In exchange for some tea, could we warm ourselves by your fire? Uh, a fire is out. Try next door. What? Our bellies are empty. In exchange for some tea, could we have a few cookies for dipping? We have no food. Try next door. The night is dark. 
In exchange for some tea, could we take comfort in the light of your hearth? Our den is small and crowded. Try next door. But next door there is only a hill. That's all right, says Big Brother. Maybe the hill will be more welcoming. As the bears set off, leaning on each other and into the wind, a voice rings out from behind them. Wait, calls Little Fox. He has found something to share after all. You can't eat it. And it's not as warm or nearly as bright as a fire. But it's still generous, Big Brother says kindly. Thank you. On the hill, the night grows colder, so cold that the wind turns white. Soon the ground is blanketed in soft white snow. Big Brother and Little Brother look at each other and smile. They will be just fine. But there's danger in the fox den. The snowfall is so heavy that it becomes more threatening than the wind. The roof folds and twists, ready to give way. Quickly, everyone out, shouts Father Fox. Oh, what will they do now? It's so cold, says Mother Fox. It's so dark, says Father Fox. Look, says Little Fox. I see a light. As the foxes approach, the scent of ginger and cinnamon fills the air. Closing their eyes and taking deep breaths, they follow their noses. Finally, they reach the curious light. The snow is still falling. The wind is still blowing. Little Fox steps forward and shouts, The wind is cold and the night is dark. In exchange for some cookies, would you share your shelter with us? The lantern light is weakening and our den is small and crowded and we have nothing to eat, says Big Brother. But our tea will warm you better than any fire and with your cookies for dipping, it will be delicious. Come in, come in. And that is how two strangers came to share their humble shelter on a stormy winter's night when the moon could not be seen. The End Friends, turn to the grown-ups beside you and tell them who in this story was being like Jesus' disciples sharing food with the crowd. I bet you're saying the bears, maybe Little Fox. Because even though they didn't have a lot to share, when they did share their tea, their cookies, their light, their shelter, then both the bears and the foxes had enough to get them safely through the storm. The Bible stories that we'll hear today remind us that we need to be like the bears and the foxes and share what we have so everyone has enough. And friends, when we share our stuff, we are being exactly like Jesus' disciples who were sharing food with that big crowd of people. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for people who share with us when we don't have enough and help us remember that we too can share what we have so everyone has enough. Amen. I will sing with you, my family, will you sing with me? I will sing with you. My family, will you sing with me? The notes won't always come out as I'd like But I will learn to see the log in my own eye God, I'll surrender Bring us together Bring us together I will sing with you My neighbor will you sing I will sing with you, my neighbor, will you sing with me? My words will be imperfect, but I'll 
try Bringing my assumptions to the light I'll pray, God, I'll surrender Bring us together Bring us together I will sing with you, my rival, will you sing with me? I will sing with you, my rival, will you sing with me? Difference is a place where God is found in seeking peace, we're walking on to holy ground. God, we surrender. Bring us together. Bring us together. We will sing our song. Together sing in harmony We will sing our song Together whether two or three Jesus feels our pain He sets us free The Spirit's given us This song of hope to sing, God, we surrender. Bring us together. Bring us together. Bring us together. Bring us together. Today's scripture reading comes from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Basilis, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh airs of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. May this scripture be a blessing unto your soul. Many years ago, God inspired David to write some words of encouragement to you and I today. I'd like to share those words with you. Uh, I will be sharing from the book of Psalms, 146 chapter, the book of Psalms, 146 chapter. David had a great faith in God, and I believe all who trust in him, amen, uh, will be blessed, amen, and encouraged, amen, at heart. Let's share this word together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes. In son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose hope is the God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them who keeps faith 
forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widows and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. May God bless us with his favor and for the reading of his word. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, the ninth chapter. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. He took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close and the 12 came to him and said, send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and the countryside to lodge and get provisions for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up 12 baskets of broken pieces. The Gospel of the Lord. Each of the four gospels tells this story of the feeding of the 5,000. I wonder what made this story important enough for all of the gospel writers to tell. Even Jesus' birth isn't told by all four gospel writers. In this story, we hear an echo of the story of the manna in the Old Testament, another one of my favorite stories, as well as the second king story where the prophet Elisha feeds 100 men with 12 barley loaves when his disciples tell him it cannot be enough. But everyone eats and there are leftovers besides. There's enough, like the bread and the fish on the hillsides of Galilee. This miracle makes us wonder, doesn't it? How did it happen? Barbara Brown Taylor in her book, The Seeds of Heaven, wonders, did Jesus multiply the loaves all at once so that the disciples had to recruit people to help carry all the bread? Or did it happen as the loaves were passed through the crowd? As you reached to take a loaf, did it sort of jump in your hands and get bigger? Or maybe, Maybe as you were shifting your child from one hand to the other, you set down your loaf, and then when you went to pick it up again, suddenly there were two. How did it happen exactly? This miracle of multiplying bread makes me curious what the Galileans saw and experienced in that moment. Were they aware there was enough? Or were they worried that the bread wouldn't last till it got to them? The disciples were acting out of a sense of scarcity. They probably looked at this crowd and saw very meager resources. But Jesus was operating out of a whole different set of assumptions. Imagine yourself sitting in a crowd, like at a football stadium, and watching Jesus take five loaves and two fish and act like it will feed everyone. As I read this passage, 
three phrases jump out at me. The first is this. Jesus tells the disciples in verse 13, you give them something to eat. This brings me up short. What would Jesus have me do? I'm not a miracle worker. Did Jesus really expect the disciples to feed this crowd? Or was Jesus inviting them to pay attention? Watch, be part of God at work. Perhaps when Jesus tells the disciples that they are to be the ones to give food to the people, he is inviting them to take action and be part of something bigger that God is doing. Stop waiting for the miracle, Jesus seems to say, and start being part of making it happen. Perhaps some in the crowd felt deeply moved by Jesus' new set of assumptions and, and felt their own tiny rations in their pockets and felt prompted to share. Maybe like the children's story of stone soup, a bit of lamb here, a few dates there, it becomes a feast. Whatever the details, this was a miracle of God's generosity. The second phrase that jumps out at me is in verse 17, where it says, all sat down and were filled. Jesus lived out creative abundance on that hillside. And God is still the same God of creative abundance today in the midst of my too often narrow worldview of scarcity. Here is the reminder of God's creative abundance. Last year, at the start of this COVID pandemic, I was not imagining the Jesus message of abundance would ring so true for Bridge of Hope. Last March, at the start of the pandemic, most of us in leaderships of organizations, churches, and businesses began doing scenario planning from worst to best case scenario. In my case, I confess that I did from bad to worst case scenario and couldn't imagine a best case scenario as the economy was shutting down and we were continuing to get calls for help from homeless families. Would we begin to need to lay off staff, which would mean serving less families right at a time of increased need would churches that weren't gathering together in person still be willing to step forward as neighboring volunteers for families facing homelessness in Bridge of Hope? The future felt so unknown. But what I saw as likely scarcity, God saw as a moment for a miracle. The people of God began to respond. It was like the loaves and fishes. We began getting gifts with notes like this. I know so many others are experiencing unemployment right now, and so I felt prompted to give an extra gift. Or I am sharing my stimulus check with Bridge of Hope to bless a single mom right now. And the miracle of neighboring continued to happen. Churches continued to want to help families who were struggling and said yes, to serving as neighboring volunteers, even in the midst of a pandemic. Throughout this past year, we have continued to see a significant increase in calls for help from families facing homelessness. But the loaves and fish are still multiplying. As we keep stepping out in faith, saying yes to serving more families, God's people have continued to step forward to help as neighboring volunteers, as landlords, and in giving. Enough to meet the need. Now I confess that still many days, I fail the lesson of seeing God's creative abundance. But this I know, if I am not on the alert, the day will pass and I will fail to see the bread that God is providing on the hillside amidst homelessness, amidst vulnerable families, who God loves so abundantly. And the third phrase that jumps out at me in this passage 
is the final words of verse 17, where it says, what was left over was gathered up 12 baskets of broken pieces. I love to imagine this moment of the disciples gathering up the broken pieces of bread with Jesus after this miracle feeding. I wonder what they said to each other and to Jesus. So many leftovers, Jesus, such abundance. What does gathering broken pieces with Jesus mean for us today? First, I suggest that it means allowing the love of Christ to radiate through us in an overflowing way to those in need around us. Simply pouring out an abundance of love on our neighbors. Second, it means recognizing that we aren't the fixers. We aren't the solution. Jesus is the healer and the miracle worker. But Jesus asks us to take action and be part of what God is doing with the broken pieces around us. The pain of a hungry belly, the pain of a child who must sleep in a car and has no address to tell his friends when his kindergarten teacher asks them each to memorize their home address. Jesus invites us to get out of our comfort zone and abundantly love those who are hurting on the hillside around us. Some days at Bridge of Hope feel like we are looking over a crowd of 5,000 faces like the disciples did and wondering with them what on earth Jesus could mean with the words, you give them something to eat, you find them housing are the words that ring in our ears at Bridge of Hope. How, Lord? We only have limited staff, limited funds, and a limited number of landlords who will rent to our families. But then we begin. We begin serving one family and then the next. And suddenly the church neighboring volunteers, the funds, the housing are there as we need them. Mother Teresa said, I never look at the masses as my responsibility. I look at the individual. I can only love one person at a time. Same thing for you, same thing in the church where you go. Just begin, one, one, one. I spoke recently to a woman who 10 years ago was living in her car with her son before she found Bridge of Hope. A few weeks ago, she told me this. My childhood years created so much trauma for me and the abuse I experienced is not something any child should have to endure. At 15, I was pregnant and alone. By the time I heard of Bridge of Hope, my son was six and I was parking my car in front of my brother's apartment each night and sleeping in it. My brother was already helping my mom and didn't have space for me and my son, but I at least felt safe in the parking lot outside his window. When Bridge of Hope introduced me to my neighboring volunteers from a Lutheran church, I had no idea that these seven women, along with Bridge of Hope, would change my life. They gathered the pieces of my life and I realized I was not just broken, but beloved. This story of Jesus feeding 5,000 from five loaves and two fish that is told in every gospel invites us to gather broken pieces with Jesus, the Lord of creative abundance. May you and I commit ourselves to responding to Jesus' invitation to be part of the work of God in the world, part of the creative abundance of the good news, part of gathering up broken pieces 
And may we see those facing homelessness as well as ourselves as both broken and beloved by God. Amen. This song is written by Brian Moyer Suderman, and it's called There's Enough for All. There's enough for all if we would learn to share it. There's enough for all if we would learn to see. There's enough for all. Let's bring our loaves and fishes and offer them to Jesus. There's more than enough for you and me. There's enough for all. If we would learn to share it, there's enough for all. If we would learn to see, there's enough for all. Let's bring our loaves and fishes and offer them to Jesus. God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family and especially upon those families making the difficult struggle from homelessness to stability and well-being. We are especially mindful of those families in our communities who too often are the victims not only of circumstance, but also of prejudice and injustice. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and peoples may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. When my son was born, I had a full-time job. I had my own apartment. However, then after he was born, I was diagnosed with that chronic illness that when I had surgery for it, they found cancer cells. So he was about six months old when I pretty much ran out of my savings. And it was a matter of what are we gonna do because I didn't have family and support trying to deal with um, raising a baby on my own and work. It wasn't an ideal situation that you know I truly wanted to be in or a situation that I wanted my son to be in. The more I tried to help us, the deeper we got. I am neighboring. I am neighboring. I am neighboring. Families who are hurting and homeless should not be alone. At Bridge of Hope, neighboring is how you, along with six to 10 others from your church, Bible study, or house church, can tangibly walk alongside those who need the love of Jesus. A Bridge of Hope neighborhood of support is a three-way partnership 
engaging Christian faith communities in ending family homelessness through neighboring relationships that demonstrate Christ's love. It begins with you, me, and Bridge of Hope as part of a neighborhood of support for a family facing homelessness. Bridge of Hope provides training for neighboring volunteers to help equip you to open your eyes, open your hands, open your hearts, and open doors to end family homelessness. Through Bridge of Hope and the neighboring volunteers, we were able to get an apartment. That's just where the pieces started getting put together for us. At that time, my son was three, and all he wanted for Christmas was a bed. Denise and her husband and her son Clayton shows up to our front door and they had the mattress for Caleb and Denise has been like a sister to me since then. Bridge of Hope guided me and they gave me the neighboring volunteers and they gave me the supports that I needed for me to get where I am today. Become a neighbor right where you live. It's something your whole family can be a part of along with your church group or your Bible study. Neighboring is living out Jesus' teaching to go and do likewise. Join the neighboring movement today. So, are you feeling the nudge or the call of God to join the neighboring movement? If so, we invite you to open your eyes, explore your current understandings, and to learn and gain new perspectives on the issues surrounding family homelessness. We invite you to open your heart to offer understanding, support, encouragement while developing an ongoing relationship with the family. We encourage you to open your hands to offer tangible, practical support, such as helping to look for housing, childcare, helping to provide transportation as needed, finding household furnishings, providing meals, etc. Last but not least, we invite you to open doors to use your personal and professional networks to help a family find housing, a medical provider, employment, and other resources in order to support their long-term success. If you are ready to join the neighboring movement, then I invite you to partner with Bridge of Hope and be a part of a neighboring volunteer group. Your involvement will make a significant and lasting difference in the life of a family experiencing homelessness. And last but not least, if you and a group of six to 10 others from within your congregation are ready to become neighboring volunteers, someone from Bridge of Hope would be more than happy to lead you through the training process. We not only provide the initial training, but we also provide ongoing training and support throughout your participation with Bridge of Hope.